Hey, Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be making over this dresser. It's got the big mirror, swivel mirror up top, cool little candle tin, um, tin, tin candle holders at the top as well that we'll be highlighting. And really what I want to be showing you in this video is how to take something like this and play up the details. So rather than going super bold with color, um, by which often I do to dress up a piece, with this we're going to go simple. We're going to keep it simple, but we're going to highlight all of the intricate carving and details in here. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips along the way so that you can do this exact same finish. As always, hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, keep me coming at you, giving you some more great tips and techniques that you can use in refinishing your own furniture. When you have a piece like this, it's got all of these intricate carvings, right? It's got all this detail. These are, are carved in little lines across here. It's got a little bit of raised molding, this level of detail, all these flowers, and it carries on up above as well you have kind of two ways to go. Either you can paint it all kind of a solid color and, and make those disappear or paint it multiple colors, layer the colors and have some of this detail disappear or paint it deliberately to highlight those details. And that's what we're gonna do. We're going to highlight all these details. I love them. I think it's going to make it really, really unique. And in order to do that, we're going to go super simple, meaning this is going to be fairly busy in the sense that if we're highlighting that, there's going to be a lot of this detail that's going to be showing. So we want the overall finish to not be as detailed so that this detail doesn't look overdone. It's just going to look awesome. So we are actually going to be painting this piece white. And I know. I don't do a lot of white pieces. I know I get a lot of people that want me to be doing more white pieces, but um, we're gonna do this one white. But to get started, we actually want to go a little bit dark. What I don't want is when we do the distressing, and we're gonna be doing a lot of distressing to highlight the details, we don't want this kind of orangey brown to come through. And that's one of the problems with some of these beautiful old pieces is that this isn't a color that a lot of people want in their homes nowadays. And because of that, they are passing these pieces by. So we're gonna update this so that it gets loved again and that it works in people's decor. So to do that, we're actually going to start with a product, and this is a well-used, well well-loved can of this, and I have a brand new one waiting in the wings, called Dark and Decrepit. It's from DIY, and you guys, if you've been following me, know that I love Debbie's Design Diary Paint. Um, and, and it is, you can use it as a glaze, you could seal with it, it's got a built-in sealer to it. So. The advantage of doing that, rather than painting the piece dark, is when it comes time to distress. If you're distressing it, if I just painted this and then I painted multiple coats of my white over top and I distress back, then I run the risk of distressing through the white. And, uh, sorry, not through the white. We want to distress through the white. But I run the risk of distressing through the black and having that brown color show up. So I could paint it black, poly over top of it, paint the white over top of the poly, and then distress. And because of that poly, it'll help me just distress back to the black that I've put on here, or that dark color, um, rather than going to that kind of golden brown. There are times that I might want some of this to show. So there's gonna be some times that maybe I might do a patchy finish and only seal certain colors so that I can have that color show up, I can have some of the natural wood show up. In this case, I'm just looking at that contrast between the white and this dark, it's not even quite black, it's like a really dark gray. So that, oh, I got a leaking, leaking jar when I shook it. So the first step then is nothing more than simply painting this lightly over the top. Now, I'm probably gonna be doing two coats, and you can see 
I am I cleaned this really well because it's an old piece um, so I cleaned it really well but I have not primed it because I don't need to <laughs> I don't need to it's gonna be okay and this is gonna help seal it as well but I will probably do two coats of this now this dark and decrepit as a product is pretty awesome if this was raw wood this dark and decrepit would in essence stain the wood I could wipe this back and leave some behind and it would stain it I could reapply it to get it darker if I wanted or needed um, I could use it as a glaze so if this piece was already painted and sealed with poly then I could use this as a glaze putting this on and then wiping it back and just leaving it in those little grooves this time I'm using it as my base so that I get that that darker slightly richer color underneath the white that I will layer on top and this will actually make this piece have a little bit of tooth to it so that when I I apply the white it will help kind of seal it but I get a lot of people that I think that they're the challenge that they have with some of these pieces is kind of envisioning the end game first and then understanding the steps that have to be made leading up to that end game so for this I know that I want to be able to see that darker piece I know that I'm gonna to want to distress it I know that I'm gonna to want to reveal some of these details and I also know that I want those details to be dark I don't want them to be this golden brown which is a lovely warm brown but that darker kind of darker gray blacky tone is going to look way better revealed and contrasted with the white and if I do the hardware in kind of that dark color probably in, in maybe a matte black again you're going to have that that beautiful contrast and it's really going to highlight this piece we're going to make a lot of those those carved details pop and it's going to make this an infinitely more popular piece than it is right now Let me bring you up to date. We have done our base coat in dark and decrepit. And if you recall, that helps seal the piece. We've then done two coats and a little bit of touch up of white. And this is beadboard by DIY. So we've got our white paint on, we've got our dark undercoat, and now it's time for sanding. And what I really wanted to do with this project was to highlight for you some of the difference between wet and dry sanding. I get ask this question a lot from beginners in terms of which one to use which one's better oh let me try and get in a good position here um, and let's face it I mean wet sanding does not make a mess dry sanding makes a mess but I will almost always when I chalk paint do a quick dry sand and usually with and here I'm gonna grab my glasses but usually with like, I've got 320. Um, so a really, really super, super fine sandpaper. And all I will do is just one quick pass over top of everything, right? So just quick little pass over everything. I'm not really looking at distressing. I'm just sanding the piece very quickly. And what that does is it knocks off all of the high little uh, spots of paint 
where maybe you've got some brush strokes and it just means that if I did nothing else, even if I wasn't distressing, if I did nothing else, just doing that before I would add my poly or my wax is gonna give me a really nice, lovely, buttery smooth finish. So just knocking off the top of that. You could even just simply take a brown paper bag and do the same thing and it will help smooth it out as well. And it's just gonna give you a, a nicer touch. So you're not creating tons and tons of dust doing that. You're not distressing um, in any way. You're just taking off a little bit of that top coat. So it's not unusual for me if I don't wanna be distressing to do maybe two coats of, especially if I'm doing white, do two coats of my paint and then do maybe a quick watered down version of that same paint over the top. So that when I go to do my smoothing sanding, that's what I'm taking off, but it just kind of knocks everything down without giving me the distressed look. So that's one type of sanding and that would be dry sanding. I do not have the same success with wet sanding over top um, to be able to do that. And note, that this is really dependent upon the type of paint that you're using. If you're using a latex based paint, you are not going to be getting, you're not going to be doing dry sanding of that. It's got kind of that plastic element in it, that latex element in it, that dry sanding is just going to start peeling up your paint. So if you wanted to get a distressed look using a paint like that, you are going to have to wet sand it and you're going to have to do it when the paint has not finished drying. You're going to have to do it when the paint is still a little bit wet. If you're looking at doing um, sanding with a milk paint, you're primarily going to do dry sanding only. And a lot of times if you really want to get a chippy look, dry sand using a mouse sander or a small orbital sander and you'll get a lot more chippiness happening from that. For something like this, with chalk paint, with clay based paint, this is a clay based paint I used. Um, you could use dry sanding or wet sanding, right? The wet sanding is going to help reactivate the paint and allow you to lift it up. The challenge with wet sanding is if you don't have a base coat like I do that has that sealer in it, you could reactivate all of the layers. So if you're looking at wanting to have the under layer really show through and you haven't sealed it prior, or it doesn't have a built-in sealer, then you might want to distress really lightly with uh, dry sanding to be able to reveal that layer, okay? Because I knew that I would want to do uh, both on this piece, that's why I incorporated the sealer. And because I can do both, what it will do is actually help me get almost like two different looks. Meaning, in these ridges, and here I've just got my fine, fine, fine sandpaper over a sanding block, and I'm only using the sandy block so I can get tight creases in here, right? And I'm just gonna take it down through all of those little ridges. And I'll give you a close-up look at this afterward. But what's happening here, you can start to see just really, really fine, fine lines showing up. So what I like about the dry sanding is that it's much easier for me to get thin, fine details showing up. So same thing on this, because actually these ones are closer together, so I'm gonna fold this nice and tight, and I'm gonna put that crease right in those little ridges, and run it along using my fingernail as a bit of a guide to be able to get and highlight a little bit of those details. When I'm looking at these inset flowers, if I want to highlight the outside of the flower, then doing some little bit of dry sanding over it and the stem is gonna give me, again, a little bit of a fine line around it, kind of highlighting it more than anything else, right? When I go for the corners, and you've probably seen dressers where you have that faded look, you know, where, where it's exposing maybe some of the black and then it fades into the white paint. That's usually accomplished with wet sanding. So if I'm wet sanding, 
that's where maybe I want to go down into those little curves. You can see how that brings off a lot more paint. It starts to highlight this a lot more. So it's great for doing things like the corners and getting a little bit more wear, wear from them. You're going to get a lot more of the paints lifting and coming off, which is why I have that sealed black underneath, but you get a little bit more of that sketchy kind of wear pattern happening across. So they are both great techniques, but they do some different stuff in terms of overall look. The combination worked great for some things. Sometimes I'm doing one, sometimes I'm doing the other. Sometimes like today, I'm doing both. But it's really up to you in terms of what look you're after, what's gonna work for you, and you just go from there. Sometimes it just means playing around with it until you get the hang of it and you see what it does for you and you're able to then pick and choose what's going to work for your piece. <laughs>